Hi, International Grandmaster Ron W. Henley here with today's wrap-up of Round 7 of the Candidates Tournament for the World Championship uh, Challenger for Magnus Carlsen. Early announcements were that the match would be ultimately held in New York sometime in November, but other than that, details are a bit unclear. So going into today's round, uh, Grandmasters Kardyakian and Aronian were leading the tournament, and fittingly enough, we're playing each other today. So we will kick off our wrap-up coverage with that game. Let's take a look. Karyakian starts out knight f3 a little bit unambitiously with a king's Indian attack. Obviously, this is an opening you see quite a bit at the club level. And now, of course, c5 would be a direct transposition into the long variation of the king's Indian that comes from the French defense. But after knight d2, Aronian goes his own way and plays a5. And after e4, plays a4. Now here, Karyakin plays a3. And then after c5, we do get a transposition into the long variation of the French defense that we mentioned. Here, further preparation for the advance e5, which of course, this is White's normal typical build-up towards a kingside attack. And now, after knight c6, you would expect e5, knight d7, h4, and so forth and so on with a king's and in. Black might play b5, white goes here, black may or may not play queen c7, white plays bishop f4, and so forth and so on. Famous game in that variation, of course, is the fischer meag merson game from Sue Sinner's Zonal back in the 60s where Bobby sacked his queen and played a beautiful checkmate. Absolute class, classic in this variation. However, surprisingly enough, Karyakin refrains from playing the committal e5 advance. Instead, he plays h4. And now, Aronian seizes a possibility to uh, make the game a bit more positional and exchange. And after rook takes and b5 and knight g5, and rook a6, excellent move. It's really hard to feel like white has accomplished very much in the opening here. In fact, after queen h5 and h6, the white knight is kind of forced to retreat. And knight h3, e5 would have covered the f4 square and kept the knight boxed in a bit. And the game continuation, knight back to f3, f5 attacks the rook, rook drop back, and here, Aronian started thinking. The opening's been a huge success for him at this point, and the correct move here would be simply to play bishop f6. Bishop on f6 helps control the e5 square, the d4 square, and puts pressure down here on this pawn. However, instead, after considerable thinking, Aronian in this position after f5, rook e1, he opted instead for bishop d7, and I think this is where he led a huge opportunity not just for the round, but considering he was playing the other tournament co-leader, uh, this could have been a huge opportunity for the whole tournament. Now, of course, bishop d7, he's not expecting that he's going to be able to play bishop e8 and actually trap the queen, but it's more of a how-to-get-his-pieces-developed type situation. However, I like what Karyakin did. He immediately played knight e5, releasing a lot of the pressure on the position. And after knight takes, rook takes, Aronian's idea was to play bishop d6 and then queen f6, which on the surface, it looks like this advance with pawn to f4 is going to give him a bit of an attack. However, Koryakin defended very calmly here, simply protected this pawn that was under the eye, and after f4, instead of leading to an attack, this actually just led to liquidation. And after rook f5, queen e3, queen takes. Okay, we can see it's five pawns to five, Okay, white's king is a little bit exposed, black does have a passed h-pawn, but black also has pieces that are not so great, uh, like the rook on a6 in particular is not so, so well placed. So after queen g3 offering a trade, Aronian keeps the queens on the board, but now penetration. 